YouTube and welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to review for you guys this bike right behind me. This is a electric bike, a fat tire electric bike by Quiet Cat and it's the bike that you've seen me ride around on on some videos. You've probably seen it on my Instagram and a lot of you have been wondering A, what is this bike and B, how do you like it? You know, tell us more about it, that kind of thing. So I am going to dish out all of that information. All right, so first I'm going to go in with the specs of the bike, the technical information. So I do have a cheat sheet here on my phone. I literally just screenshotted some info from their website just to make sure that I'm giving you guys all of the correct information. So I'll kind of speed through this and then add in my input where applicable. So this is the Quiet Cat Eco 750 bike. They have 1000 watt bikes and other models as well, but this one in particular is their Eco model. It has a max unassisted speed of 19 miles per hour. The motor is a 750 watt motor. The battery is 48 volts. It is a lithium battery. It has a 19 inch frame. The brakes are a mechanical disc. Wheels and tires are 26 inches by 4.5 inches. They are fat tires if you haven't figured that out already, which is super cool. The gearing is a single speed. Um, power transfer is by stainless steel chain and the load carry is 300 pounds. So <laughs> with all of that information, it's it can sometimes be a little bit confusing what exactly an e-bike is, an electric bike, and this obviously falls into that category. So it does have a throttle, meaning you can sit on the bike without pedaling and press down on the throttle and you will start going. It has five speeds, so you can adjust on the slow end of that all the way up to five, which is the max speed of 19 miles per hour. It is also pedal assisted, so without using the throttle, you can set the bike up on you know, speeds one through five, actually technically zero. You could have it on zero and then it's not pedal assisting, but you have it on speeds one through five, and then as you pedal, the motor will automatically kick in and get you going as fast <laughs> as it can, or as fast as you wanna go. So, that makes this bike in my area only use, wait, only use, only usable, only legal. I think that's what I'm trying to say. Makes this bike only legal on motorized trails, which is very, very important. I have found that within the outdoor community as a whole, this is speaking beyond myself as a hunter and just into the whole outdoor rec community, e-bikes are misused a lot of times. So you'll definitely have to check the regulations of your particular state, your particular area, to see where these puppies are allowed to be used. I know there are some ways around it. You know, technically speaking, bikes that have under 750 watt motors and go below 19 miles per hour may be considered something in that gray area where they are allowed to be used on trails that are close to motorized but without me taking too far into this just read your regs learn what's appropriate in your area in my area these bad boys only come with me on motorized trails and i use this fella for hunting purposes for general outdoor recreation and sometimes even for commuting just getting to and from town around places just because it's so darn easy to use and it's fun to ride <laughs> this bike does not have any suspension on it which makes it a little bit of a bumpy ride on medium to rough terrain you can take it on a back road and on trails that you know aren't paved i'm not saying you know you can't go off-roading on this bike that's kind of what it was made for but because of the lack of suspension it's not going to be a true mountain bike so that is something to consider they do have other models with suspension and i am kind of kicking myself for not realizing that whenever i first got this guy because in my area i definitely do take it on some motorized trails that are pretty <laughs> 
they're maybe above my expertise level. I'm very new to mountain biking, so um, I find that the lack of suspension makes things a little bit rougher. And I also notice that my wrists become very sore very quick when I'm riding on these kind of trails. It might be partially because of my technique, so if you are a technical mountain biker and you're like, oh, you know, this is why <laughs> your wrists are hurting, please do comment below. But that's just something that I've noticed from my personal experience actually riding it. The seat is comfortable for me. I know Nick has been complaining a little bit about the seat being uncomfortable. That might be a dude thing. I don't really know, but it's comfortable for me, and the grips in general are comfortable. It's just, again, for whatever reason, my wrists tend to hurt when I'm riding. I don't know if it's this bike or if it's all bikes, but I digress. <laughs> the saddlebags. The saddlebags are awesome, and it doesn't come with the bike. It's something that you have to purchase as an accessory, but these things open up to, oh, I wish I knew, do you know how many liters or how many gallons? I'll look it up and put it on the screen. It's big. These things, I can basically unload my hunting pack and I'll still wear it, but have it unload and then I'll have all my crap in the saddlebags. So when I ride, I feel a little bit more balanced, a little bit comfortable, especially going over bumps and through creeks and crazy stuff like that. So it definitely has come in handy and for commuting. I just, I really like them. They're basically like dry bags. So even if you get stuck in the rain, which I have before, it will keep all of your things dry, which is a big plus. These saddlebags are actually resting on like a load bearing kind of bar. So you can strap down, ratchet down other things on there. Actually, whenever I killed my antelope, we ended up getting the bike out and bringing it down to where the antelope was and pretty much threw her over the back of it and then used the bike just on level one to kind of get her out of there. I mean, I don't know if, <laughs> if you'd end up doing that everywhere, but maybe for whitetail. I definitely could see us using it again for something like that. But regardless, that load shelf is nice if you wanna strap down extra goodies. Oh, we also have a sled for it. So it connects down here and then it just follows behind the bike and it only has one wheel. So when you're first getting going, it's a little bit weird, but as soon as you pick up enough speed, it just rides behind you and it'll bump around and it'll turn with you and it really follows the bike seamlessly. I don't know if that's the word that I want to use, but it follows the bike without making you feel like you're off balance or worrying about it tipping and falling over. So that thing is great. We haven't actually used it hunting yet, but I have a feeling we will here in the near future, especially with deer coming up next month. I'm going to scooch aside so that you guys can see the battery because this is really cool. It's internal. So that's gonna help with clearance on the bottom and it's also just gonna add extra protection for the motor. So the battery sits right in here and it's under lock and key. So you can lock this thing up and take the key with you if you want so that someone can't get it out. And I was thinking about this the other day, technically, you know, that's not gonna prevent anybody from like stealing your bike. But even if you do have your bike like locked up, at least having it under lock and key will prevent someone from jacking that battery because these bikes are very expensive and the battery is part of what makes it very expensive. So you definitely want to just protect your stuff and make sure that it doesn't get stolen. Although hopefully it won't. The battery life is around 20 miles, give or take, and that's gonna depend on whether you are pedal assisting the whole way or whether you are straight down on the throttle. Will depend, but around 20 miles, and I found that to be true. The screen, which is up here, it has a display screen. So you can see your battery life, you can see how far you've gone, your speed, all on the display and even if you are not using the motor you can still keep the display on just to track your miles or you know see your speed things like that 
I can say coming from someone who has little to no experience with mountain bikes or fat tire bikes or e-bikes for that matter this thing has been so easy to use literally the first day within a minute of turning it on sitting on the bike and just feeling how the motor changes i've got a hang of it right away and i'm very comfortable on this thing now i was a little bit intimidated sort of <laughs> approaching the bike and seeing how fast it could go just because I'm not used to it, but it's super easy to use. For whatever reason, the bell broke. <laughs> There's a bell on the bike, and for whatever reason, it is broken right now. I don't know why, but it's not working. So, is what it is. If you're using this in urban areas, the, the bell is obviously great to have. If you're using this strictly for hunting or outdoor rec, it may not be as important to you but mine has stopped working for some reason. The kickstand! So if you are using this for hunting, my one tip to you would be the kickstand is noisier than hell. It is so loud if you just kick it down with your foot, there's this big like clicking noise. Whereas the bike itself is very quiet. It does not make a lot of noise, which makes it ideal for getting into a hunting spot. But the damn kickstand is so loud. So my recommendation would be when you are ready to put it down, grab it by hand and just pull it out and then let it, you know, sit in the position that it needs to and it'll be fine that way. But don't kick it because you defeat the purpose of it being a quiet, means of transportation. That's my one sticking point with this being hunting specific. Kickstand's a little bit loud. Other than that, fantastic. I really, really do like this bike and I would highly recommend it for anybody who is looking at an electric bike, whether you are specifically using this for hunting or fishing, or if you're using this for commuting, you know, just outdoor rec in general. It is so much fun. I mean, e-bikes are a blast and please use them right. Follow your local rules. I don't know why that sounds, I feel like I'm saying that wrong. You get what I'm saying because that is where the most tension comes. It's when people use e-bikes on trails that they're not supposed to. So please do follow your rules because these bikes are fun and I I like them so <laughs> so that is it YouTube thank you guys so much for watching if you have questions comments please do leave them below and I will see you in the next video